Good evening, good evening, good evening. No. Hope everyone out there is doing really well on this April 4th, 2024. Peace in. Welcome to another episode of On the Cutting Room Floor. I'm the host, Tony Harvey, and this is presented by Publicity Agents, telecasting from the Green Haven Pocket Area, Sacramento, California. So once again, uh, thanks for tuning in, and I hope everyone is doing really, really well. And yes, I am here to talk about our Sacramento Kings, who lost tonight in Madison Square Garden, New York, New York City, 120 to 109 to the New York Knicks. So let me start here. Now, you're going to have to deal with the Golden State Warriors and the Los Angeles Lakers. Okay. Up until tip off of this game tonight in Madison Square Garden, they were standing on the back porch. Now both teams are in the house. With six games remaining for the Sacramento game. Sacramento King. They are standing in the middle of your kitchen. No disrespect to some international going on you are going to have to deal with the Golden State Warriors or the Los Angeles Lakers for these last six games the Mavericks won tonight so they move up in the standing and they are sitting firm in fifth place at 46 and 30 the Suns right behind them at 45 and 31 and the Pales at 45 and 31. The Sacramento Kings are 44 and 32. But the significant thing about the loss tonight in New York, the Lakers are 44 and 33, and the Warriors are 42 and 34. And the Kings have a match with the Boston Celtics in Boston, Massachusetts, the TD Center. Tomorrow evening, April 5th, 2024. The Lakers and the Warriors are now standing in the kitchen of the Sacramento Kings for play in position. Play in position. Okay. The Pelicans are having issues too. Okay. I heard earlier uh, today that uh, Zion Williamson, something with a finger. All right. I don't know if he's going to miss a game, you know, over a finger like that. I, you know, uh, to be perfectly honest, I was listening to uh, Scott Marsh and Henry the High Fly Turner on the radio show, as I always do before the Kings play on the road. And Henry, a professional himself, who played professionally, if it's just a finger, he needs to be out there. He needs to be out there. I know who Demonte Sabonis played last season with some going on with his hand. So the New Orleans Pelicans and the Sacramento Kings are really in some critical, a critical situation between both ball clubs. But I know that loss tonight from the Kings, which uh, Kings had a 21 point spread, 21 point margin in the first half. It was leading by that much. And they got squandered. I can understand that. You know, it's the NBA. Anybody can come back from a 21-point lead. But they had so many chances to win right up until the fourth quarter where everything kind of like fell apart. But the Sacramento Kings are going to have to deal with the Golden State Warriors, the San Francisco Warriors, and the Los Angeles Lakers. And I don't even, I don't care with this season thing. I know the Kings, the Kings swept the Lakers 4-0 this season. That's fine and dandy. That's great. It looks great on paper. Uh, you would have home court advantage over them in any situation. That's cool. But in the postseason, I don't know. 
All bets are off. It's a new ball game. The gig is up. You got to find another way. If you have to deal with the Lakers and the Warriors. Definitely don't want to deal with the Warriors right now. But that's where we are, folks. On a historical day. When the Sacramento region found out. That the Oakland A's will be moving to Sacramento, West Sacramento. Okay, right across the river, Sacramento River. In Yolo County. That we'll be playing at Sutter Health Park starting in 2025. For the next three seasons with an option on the table for a fourth season if they're not finished or not negotiation or not nego or not done negotiating with uh Las Las Vegas where they are uh potentially going to move by 2029 or 2030, whatever, how, however that plays out, however that shakes out. On a historical day, that Sacramento temporarily will receive a Major League Baseball franchise, a story Major League Baseball franchise in the Oakland A's. But back to basketball, Sacramento Kings. So yes, tonight, 121-09. New York Knicks defeat the Sacramento Kings in Madison Square Garden. Okay, uh, they started off great. The uh, Keon Ellis, De'Aaron Fox hitting threes in the first quarter. Uh, after after the first 12 minutes, they were leading 35 to 20. They had made seven to ten shots in three point territory. Fox had uh, eleven of those points, and Keon had nine points. So he hit three threes in that first quarter, and that was it. That was it. He only made two points the rest of the way. So that's how it went. And as I mentioned, you know they had a twenty one point lead uh, in the uh, second quarter. They built up a twenty one point lead in the second quarter. Then all of a sudden, the Knicks surged back. Okay, and cut the league to 50 to 44 on a 19 4 run. But the Kings held on at the half and they led 60 to 52. That was the first half. The third quarter, the Knicks caught up on them, caught up with them. Okay, the Knicks came back. They tied the game at 84 84 on a three pointer by. Dante Devins and Chinso. Excuse me. I'm not really good at announcing, <laughs> calling these uh, Italian last names. So, excuse me, Dante. I know you played here for a minute. So, we'll just go from there. Dante Devins and Okay, yes. He uh, tied the game up on, uh, on a 84 84 3. The Knicks took the lead briefly. 87-84 on three free throws by Dante. He was fouled by Fox. Fox come back and he makes a three and they end the third quarter 87-87 tied. So that's how the third quarter ended. And then the fourth quarter. <laughs> the game was tied at 92-92. De'Aaron Fox make a three to take the lead. So they're up 95, 92. And then the wheels start to fall off, folks. Completely off. Knicks went on a 27 to 8 run. The Knicks went on a 27 to 8 run. The Knicks went on a 27 to 8 run. And at the end of that run, they were up 119 to 103. So that means from there, okay, after Fox hit the three and they were up 95, 92, the Knicks outscored the Kings 27 to 14 to close out that fourth quarter, to close out that game. All right. I think they were, they took 15 shots from the field. They only made six. It was a really bad fourth quarter. Really bad. And a lot of that had to do with Dante. Um, 
Miles McBride for the Knicks, and uh, a whole lot of Josh Hart. A whole lot of that. He had 31 points tonight. So that was pretty much the uh, game summary. And that's why I say Sacramento Kings, you're going to have to deal with the Golden State Warriors and you're going to have to deal with the Los Angeles Lakers for these last six games. So I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Of course, we're going to find out in the next 24 hours when the Kings play the Boston Celtics in Boston, Massachusetts. They are on a four-game road trip that started today in New York. Oh, boy. Really been a tough season. Really been a tough season. And I say that because the Kings have really been playing some pretty good defense. The defense that they've been wanting to uh, reach all season. Okay, for 76 games now. They've been clicking on all cylinders. And then this is how it was, you know, in the first quarter. You know, they was, you know, doing their thing, you know, getting deflections, getting steals. Okay, getting out, running in transition. As they usually do. All right. Hitting threes left and right. Once again, he was 7 for 10, you know, shooting behind the arc. They shot well. I think they was shot 64, 65% in the first half. We know New York, okay, and they were out without Julius Randle, who's out for the rest of the season. He's going to have a Surgery, I believe, on his surgery. Uh, surgery on his surgery. He's going to have surgery on the shoulder. So he's been out to about 30 games already. He didn't play when the Knicks won 98-91 on March 16th here in uh, Sacramento at Golden 1 Center. So you know they really want that game. They were on a three-game losing streak. Okay. They were on a three-game losing streak, a uh, three-game winning streak. Then they were on a Three game losing streak. So they just snap that just like that on the Sacramento King. They are in fifth place in the Eastern Conference. <clears throat> and, you know, they right there in that area with uh, the Orlando Magic. Okay, so they're in a tough situation without uh, one of their best players. He He's out, but uh, I don't think they're going to have too much problems anyway, just as long as they can uh, find some scoring. And uh, Jason Hart. Uh, look like he's going to have to be one of those guys for them to uh, supply a significant amount of points for the New York Knicks. And he did that tonight against the Sacramento Kings with 31 points. And you know he could pass. He could rebound. I think he had nine rebounds, eight assists, something. Hey. And one thing I noticed about uh, Josh Hart and uh, Dante DiVincenzo, they both used to play for Villanova. And I remember when Dante was in a Sacramento Kings uniform a couple seasons ago, and he was telling us about Villanova program, you know, when he was in college. And he would say he could tell when somebody was out of line, out of place, okay, whether it was in study hall or whether it was something they, you know, practicing or drills, he would know that person was out of step. I mean, they had to be in rhythm. And the reason why I bring that up, because, you know, because Jason Hart played there too. They played together. Uh, they were in rhythm. And I mean by carrying that team. They knew what to do. They came from a winning program. They know how to play defense, okay? They know when to step up offensively, when things have to be done. As far as playmaking, scoring, and rebounding, all of that, okay? They are essentially themselves are two-way players. They are. And that's what they had developed up as far as their professional careers. They developed that coming out of college in a great program in Villanova. That's what I've seen about that. Oh, yeah, by the way, Dante did have 21 points tonight. But, hey, okay, let's go, on, you know, down the line with this, you know. Uh, Fox, he did have 29 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, and three steals in 39 minutes. He was 11 for 26 from the field. He, yes, he's going to have to put up some 
shots. Now that you know Malik Malik Monk is a sideline. Okay, he made six threes tonight out of thirteen attempts. He only went to the free throw line once. He made that and he had one block. No problem there. Okay, so bonus as well. Seventeen points, eleven rebounds, seven assists, one block in thirty five minutes. He just recorded his 59th straight double-double, which is a record. An all-star record, a Hall of Fame record. Uh, now you going to say a Hall of Fame record, but definitely qualify you for uh, the Hall of Fame. Keegan Murray, 18 points, two rebounds, one block in 31 minutes. He did make four threes. Uh, I'm not really worried about Keegan. He knows what the deal is now. He's going to be doing that. As well, and um, he's he's been doing that for the last couple of games with uh, Malik being out. So he's just going to bump it up on on the rebound tonight, but and play just play a little bit more on the defensive end. I didn't see really too too much out of him on on that defensive end. I mean, you know, New York played really physical anyway, and that was a physical game. Keon Ellis, as I said, he had nine points in the first quarter. They were all threes. He only had two points the rest of the way. He played 30 minutes, and he had three rebounds, four assists, and two steals. And two steals as a starter. Davion Mitchell still rolling along. He had 11 points. And so did Sasha Vin Vinsikov, uh, who came back a couple games ago. So they have his service. Matter of fact, he hit like two threes toward the end of the game. So he's he's ready to go. I know is um, he only played what probably about thirteen minutes maybe tonight, and then there's Trey Lyles, ten points in twenty eight minutes. Okay, but they just couldn't hit anything, you know, in the last few minutes. You know, when the uh, New York Knicks went on that little run in the middle of the uh, fourth quarter, they're pretty much done them in. I mean they. Shot pretty good tonight. You know, they made uh, 42 out of 86 shots from the field. 18 for 42 from three-point land. And, but those free throws, okay, here we go. Uh, they were 7 for 12 at 58%. Uh, 58%. They had 16 turnovers. 16 turn turnovers. And if I um, said again, they only made 6 of 15 shots. From the field, and a lot of those was towards the end of the game anyway. And the Knicks outscored Sacramento Kings 33-22 in that final frame. They scored 35 points in the uh, third third quarter, the Knicks did. So, yeah, you're going to have to deal with the Golden State Warriors and the Los Angeles Lakers, Sacramento Kings. It's all play-in. We are, I, 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 unless you win these last six, okay, you still have three more games on this road trip, and you have three more at home. Your final three at home. But uh, not only I just think you, this is the territory that you're going to pretty much remain in for you know, the, the, the rest of the season. I just hope you do well, okay, and pull at least – Two thirds of these games out, win them. Because so now we're going to, we're seeing that you know, with the uh, with Malik Monk being sideline, yeah, with Malik Monk being sideline, the Kings are going to struggle in some area because they don't have that energy coming off the bench like they had. Okay, and that energy, that source of energy, okay, that was coming in there. All right. Gonna add protons, neutrons, electrons, I, I, whatever this kid is on, all right, that he's carrying. And I'm talking about Malik Monk, okay? It's not there. It's not there. Because when he comes in with that fire, with that energy, okay, it changed the whole dynamics of what the Kings doing with their second unit. And as we know, he plays, uh, he's on the court when the buzzer sound in the fourth quarter. So now we're really going to see, you know, what you really made of. Okay, you got away with two games before you went on the road trip. I mean, you finished what three and two in that five game home home stretch. Okay, uh, 
last two without him. All right. Cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Kevin Herter's out too. Cool. And I know it's all that, you know, this next man mentality. Yes. Yes. Okay. But some guys not going to play above the level that they are. I know that was discussed. I think Harrison Brown. But okay. All right. If that's how it's going to be. <laughs> because the struggle is real now. Because now you're going to have to deal with the Golden State Warriors and the Los Angeles Lakers. In these last six games. Let alone what's happening with the New Orleans Pelicans, the Phoenix Suns, and the Dallas Mavericks. All right. Jason Hart, 31 points, nine rebounds, eight assists, two steals, and 43 minutes. He was 14 for 19 shooting from the floor. Dante, 21 points, five rebounds, one assist in 38 minutes. He made five three-pointers. Five three-pointers and one block. He had one block. But the man of the hour, uh, Jalen Brunson, 35 points, two rebounds in 38 minutes, three steals, 11 assists. I think he had 18 points in the first half. 18 or 19 points in the first half, something like that. But... As you know, he had 42 on uh, March 16 in their 98-91 victory in Sacramento. The rest of the team didn't do nothing. This was this guy. But this time, he did his thing and everybody. He got a little contribution from other people. Like Josh Hart. Dante Vincenzo. And Bojan Bogdanovic. Where everybody know we got uh, the Knicks got him from uh, a trade from Detroit. They got him and Alec Burke. Okay, he had 12 points off the bench. The New York Knicks bench only had 14 points, and 12 of them went to Bojan. Okay, Alec Burke he played. He didn't even score. Uh, I think who was that? Uh, Robinson, 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 Robinson. The uh, He's now a backup center and stuff. He came off. I think he had the other two points and he had seven rebounds. And then there's uh, Miles McBride. One is, he's starting right now. Okay. He played 42 minutes. He had 12 points. He made three threes. He had made two crucial threes in that second, in that third quarter that really gave them that push when they were, they came back to tie the uh, game up in the uh, third quarter. And I believe that was when they went on that run and they got up. They tied up the game at 84-84, third quarter. But Miles McBride had something to do with that as well. And then there's uh, Hartenstein. Uh, Hartenstein, seven points and nine rebounds. So, yeah, you know, all of them, you know, made uh, some significant contributions, you know, uh, surrounding uh, Jalen uh, Brunson to uh, pull, out, pull out that victory. So that's pretty much where we are. I'm not going to go too far into this because we have another game tomorrow. It's a back-to-back, -back, and they will be in Boston, Massachusetts at the TD Center, April 5th, 2024. But now you're going to have to deal with the Golden State Warriors and the Los Angeles Lakers. You've got to deal with them now because they are standing in your house, in the kitchen. And when I say you, they are standing in the kitchen, oh, they ready to move up to the living room, baby. But you can stop that. You can't stop that, Sacramento King. There will be a postseason. There may not be an automatic bid in the playoffs. You might get your two games in uh, the play-in. We know that. Because I don't think you're going to drop any further than 10th. Uh, I really hope you don't fall any further than hey, where you stand right now. So you can't be looking for no other help for these other teams. You either have to win them all out or at least win two-thirds of them because you are going to have to deal with the Golden State Warriors and the Los Angeles Lakers. That I will say. 
that, I will say. And, uh, of course, you know, I, I wish all of you players well. Been working your butt off this season. Regardless, it's been up and down, on and off, left and right, on and off, left and right, all of that. I understand. I understand. It's a long season. You got to grind it out. The, the certain injuries came at the most inopportune time. Because you could use a Kevin Herter right about now, too. <laughs> yes, I said that. You could use a Kevin Herter right about now, too. Alongside Malik Monk. Okay. But have six games left to uh, see where you want to be and how you want to do it. And I think you at some point can get there. But. We will see you again tomorrow in the next 24 hours. I do want to thank everybody for, you know, dropping in. Hey, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Um, had some technical uh, difficulties uh, during the uh, five-game home stretch. Um, yeah, basically with the audio, but I think uh, right now I'm just trying to close out the season, have a good season myself. And then as we go through the off season, you know, I have a little bit more time to work on uh, the production definitely is going to be a uh, changes in the studio, but in the meantime, just hold on. I'm gonna, I, I'm getting there. That's all I can say. That you know, I'm confident that that will happen. As long as I can keep all you know this uh, the audio straight, and clear, and loud as everyone have been uh, demanding. And thank you. And I, you know, if anything, I do take. Constructive criticism, just as long as it's not disrespectful, okay? Because in the business of journalism, that's just how it is. Some people can't handle that, I think. You know, they just think everything, you know, think this stuff is easy. But there's a lot of layers to uh, what, you know, what happens here. And I mean, as far as taking accountability. I'm just being straight up. But uh, once again, hey, hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel. And tune back in tomorrow night after the Sacramento Kings take on the Boston Celtics in Boston, Massachusetts. In the meantime, love, peace, and solidarity. I'm out of here.